to, again, these are vast subjects, but we just want to touch on these yeah. to, to see how they enrich or, or, or take away from the concept of God's perfection. Another you mentioned uh, about God's impassibility, that he cannot be moved by us. You think that that's maybe wrong because the scripture says maybe God can be moved, that it's not just mer- metaphorical, that God is really affected. Now, how does that uh, 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 juxtapose with the traditional view that I think you hold that God is outside of time? Because if God is outside of time, then how can God change? Because well, if you're outside of time, you, you, you don't change because change is, a, is, is like well, a derivative but, of time. But I mean, the, you know, to say that God is outside of time doesn't necessarily mean that God is only outside of time. I mean, certainly as, as, a, as a Christian, I hold to the incarnation that God became a human being and entered time. So in a sense, he gets it all. I mean, he's <laughs> able to, he moves in time and he's, he's also, also outside of time. And so, you know, but I, th- I think there are, there, are, there are mysteries with, with, with God. I mean, here you have a God who creates, creates the world and is not constrained by the character he's given the world. I mean, in a sense, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's free, but he, he, he still works within that world. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not, we're, we're not going to get our mind around, you know, all these, these perfections and the, the way God interacts with, with the world. But I think one thing I would say is, you know, these, a lot of these perfections, I, mean, I think what we do is we take some human quality or some quality in the world and we just, you know, <laughs> just run it, run it up the flagpole as, as high as it can go. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I think in some cases that's, that's legitimate, but uh, I'm not sure it, it holds across the board, you know, and I think, uh, uh, as I see it, God has revealed himself in history, has revealed himself in scripture. And, uh, and so this is, we, we need to take seriously what we, what we find there. And some of the things there are, are paradoxical because, you know, I mean, it, it does say that God does not change. And yet it seems that he does respond and then he'll make, and there'll be statements, you know, I wish I hadn't done this. You know? <laughs> so, but how do, how do we, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, I, I think it's, it, it's simplistic to say, well, you know, this, this, Therefore, you know, basically, this is just a human document. It doesn't doesn't hold together, and there's really no no divine inspiration behind this. Or are, are there deeper truths, and there there are paradoxes even in the the divine life that you know we're, we're just not going to make sense of. You know, now, you know, when you invoke paradox and mystery, people will say, "Well, you're just mystery monger. You know, <laughs> you're just uh, throwing in the towel." But uh, you know, the thing is, even on materialistic grounds, you've got lots of things you, you don't understand. You're not getting your mind around. I mean, nature of consciousness, yeah, <laughs> which we've discussed. You know, yeah. it's, uh, so uh, I'm not sure in the end we've got more mysteries or unresolved things than the materialist. You know, it's, uh, it's just we've got maybe different things that we're <laughs> having, having a hard time uh, juggling. And One of the traditional characteristics of God is God's so-called simplicity, uh, that God doesn't have any parts. Mm-hmm. Um, is, is that a necessity as far as the, the real substance of God, that he has no parts, that it's all kind of the same stuff? Well, I mean, the thing is, our experience of parts are, are, is usually material parts, you know, and then, uh, you know, certainly the, within the uh, great monotheistic faiths, God is not uh, a material being. God, God is, a, is a pure spirit. So it's, uh, uh, so I think you're going to have problems, you know, attributing parts to God. Now, the thing is, God does have thoughts, and those thoughts, it seems, can be quite complicated. You know, but uh, so the complexity is in what God thinks and God affects uh, in creation. But it, it's not—I uh, don't think it's in the being of God Himself that, that we're going to be able to ascribe complexity or parts. I think it's so, so. You can have God as an absolute, simple, uniform—I don't know what word to use—and uh, yet having an enormity of complex thoughts about potentialities I mean, uh, enormous numbers of things yeah oh. but you know but even this notion of simplicity i mean you know i think we have to be careful i mean there's in theology i mean there's there's what's called a you know a, a, i think cataphatic tradition i mean the idea is that we approach god by negations and there's right. something to that in that you know we you know when we're saying god is simple you know i think it's not simple in the sense of some homogeneous slab of stone or something like that. You know, I mean, it's uh, the simplicity. You know, is I don't think you can make sense out of it quite that way. I mean, it's that there are no parts. That God is not a material being which can be subdivided in various ways. I think that that's that's one thing that's implied implied by that. So, if you would look at this whole idea of God's perfection, which 
is, is more of a, of, a, of a traditional Christian development, philosophical development, than a pure scriptural one, I would say. Uh, how, how important is that? I think it, it is, it is, it's very important because if you're dealing with a God that's in some ways imperfect, that has, uh, that, you know, that, that's breaking down, let's say, in moral goodness or, or, or power, uh, you know, I think you, you, you're going to have problems. I mean, a God who's, who's not all powerful is one that can't give you any guarantees, you know, in terms of future afterlife and a God who's not good. I like in some guarantees. ways, you know, you might, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to count on him, you know, so it's, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah, so I, I think uh, we certainly want them, you know, and it's, uh, and I think then uh, you've, you're going to have a job of explaining to do why less than perfect, you know, <laughs> I mean, so, so, you know, you know, in a sense, I guess if you were to say what's the simplest, it's the simplest explanation is to assume that God, you know, so far, if, if, if God exists, is that, that he does have all the perfections, you know, so, you know. Why, you know, God, why, why could you solve the, uh, you know, Poincaré conjecture in dimension three, but you can't do the Riemann hypothesis? You know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I mean, if, if he's got a, a highly skilled but not fully competent mathematician, I mean, uh, and how do you worship a God like that? You know, I think that becomes a problem. So the simplest well. answer is that the, the perfections are needed. Yeah, but I mean, that, you know, that's, but this is all very speculative. I mean, how, sure. you know, how do we know that God has these perfections? You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, again, I will look to Revelation, and you know, I think the Revelation is pretty clear that God claims to be able to do all things; that all things are subject to Him. So you've got omniscience there. God claims uh, total goodness. God, the uh, omniscience is claimed also that God knows the future, can uh, determine things. Uh, you know, so it, it seems that there are a lot of perfections which are borne out in the Revelation. I was is whatever is revealing itself, they're being honest. <laughs> I think that's a question you got to ask then, then also. But if you go with me that there is a God and that God has revealed himself in Christianity, then uh, you know, I don't think the perfections are a big stretch. I think the, the much bigger challenge in our culture is to even get, uh, get some sort of uh, you know, traditional Christianity on the table for a serious discussion. Uh,